Okay, welcome to the October 5th Board of Selectmen meeting. First order of business is to approve the minutes from the September 8th meeting. So moved. Second. No, no moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Next item of business is to set date for the RSU 14 withdrawal referendum public hearing. Uh, that the date of that meeting we need to approve for October 20th at 6.30. Is there a motion? Motion to have the meeting October 20th at 6.30 regarding the withdrawal hearing, public hearing. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Is this a Zoom meeting or is this live? It will be a Zoom meeting. Thank you, sir. We are going live. Well, I mean, it will be broadcast live, but it will be a Zoom meeting. The voice out of the dark comes yeah. out. <laughs> so, Moved and seconded. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Next item is consider relation, consideration of a letter to the Bruce Stanford regarding cemetery block. Sue? I mute myself. Um, Mr. Stanford has sent us numerous emails and they were all in your e-packet uh, expressing his concerns about the placement of his plot um, whether it was encroached upon or not by another headstone and where it all was. Um, Nathan and I had a surveyor, Bill Shippen, who has also surveyed the remaining new section of the cemetery and this row is a part of that new section. Um, and Bill put in um, stakes where the plot boundary is based on the town maps and based on his survey. And um, when Mr. and Mrs. Sanford built, bought the plot, it was an undeveloped and unsurveyed section with, and all we had in the town office for records was the hand-drawn map. And I believe you have a picture, a copy of the hand-drawn map, the uh, survey drawing, the, um, um, conveyance document that conveyed the four plots to the Sanfords and um, a letter that I'm suggesting that the selectmen um, send to the Sanfords to uh, kind of put this to rest and set where those pins need to be. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sanford, uh, you can make a, a statement if you wish, but we got the we have the documents that you've sent as well as the survey report. Actually, I want to introduce myself. I'm Karen Sanford. I'm Bruce's wife. I am actually the purchaser of Lot 84 um, at the Raymond Hill Cemetery. And I do want to thank you for having us here before you today. Uh, it's Monday, October 5th, 2020, uh, to review my and my husband Bruce's concerns regarding Lot 84. There's a lot of four plots, 10 by 18, purchased August 15th of 2012. Um, I would like to direct you to page 11 in the Sanford packet to review the cemetery map because that will orient you to everything else I'm going to be saying. Um, I do have prepared statements that I'm basically reading. Um, as per the cemetery map, lot 84 is aligned with the Jan lot 84 on the horizontal plane and 83 on the horizontal plane, and it is aligned with the DeSalle lot 77 on the vertical plane. Now, our original concern <laughs> since purchase included the clearing and leveling of lot 84, measuring for the lot 84 corners, and the position of the DeSalle monument to date. Lot 84 has been cleared. Lot 84 still needs loan to level the plot. The DeSalle monument is still incorrectly placed. On uh, Monday, September 28, 2020, which is eight years after the purchase and in response to several queries over the years, 
the town of Raymond commissioned a surveyor to mark the corners of lot 84. And I've just found out his name is Bill Shippen. Um, after the recent survey, lot 84 is now marked as an additional two feet back beyond the Jang lot 83 and four feet back from the DeSalle lot 77. So with this new survey, lot 84 is now no longer in alignment with every other lot in that back row. And that includes lot 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83. And with the new survey, lot 84 now sticks out into the green sward towards road seven. And you'll see that at the top of your map. Uh, that will negatively impact the future grave site directly behind lot 84 and will essentially cause the lot line for lot 84 and the future grave site to be one and the same. Head to toe burials with no two foot walkway between lot 84 and the lot behind. My question is, do you really want me to agree to, uh, to that with the threat of reimbursing my money, which I have neither requested nor want? Because that was posed in the letter to Bruce. Okay, we agreed with the town at the time of purchase to the original survey of a four plot lot, measuring 10 by 18, with a three foot walkway between the Jang and Sanford lots, and a two foot walkway between the DeSalle and the Sanford lots. That is the agreement Bruce and I want to abide by. I would like to return at this moment to the DeSalle Monument issue. After the recent survey, it has been determined that the DeSalle Monument does encroach into the two foot walkway between the DeSalle and Sanford lots by 12 inches, according to the original map. <laughs> so in the map you're looking at as well. <clears throat> The DeSalle Monument placement actually does not negatively impact the original Sanford Lot 84. The one foot encroachment into the walkway is between the town of Raymond and the DeSalle family. Keep or move it is your decision with one another. In keeping with the original map placement of Lot 84, this means that the Sanford Lot 84 edge should be measured as two feet back from the DeSalle rear lot line, which will keep Lot 84 in alignment with every other grave lot in that row versus pushing lot 84 back into the green sward and pushing lot 84 out of alignment with every other grave lot placement in that row. I am respectfully requesting that the town of Raymond have the recent surveyor of the new lot 84 placement resurvey lot 84 for the correct corner markers placement based on the original lot 84 placement in relationship to the horizontal and vertical placement of the surrounding grave sites to lot 84 on the Raymond Hill Cemetery map. So if you can visualize, just visualize a row of graves and then all of a sudden one sticking out by two feet. And it's only because it's been mismeasured away from the church too far out. And that's my contention is that it's, it's, a, mis, it's a mismeasurement. And I think it was based on the uh, misplacement of the DeSalle headstone initially. So I don't care if the headstone's in the walkway. That's not my pay grade. It's not going to negatively impact us. Um, we can be one foot from the DeSalle headstone. It's just that I think we should be in alignment with every other grave in our row and, you know, vertically and horizontally as well. Uh, let me do a little bit of historical uh, talking about how my thinking on this entire issue evolved. When we bought the lot in 2012, it was quite clear that the DeSalle Monument, its back was not in alignment with the Zhang monuments uh, between lot 77 and 76. There also were two granite markers in the ground with the letter J. And in my earliest emails dating back to 2015 and 16, I noted that those corner monument markers with the letter J were 12 feet apart. I measured them. I've measured them a half a dozen times. They're 12 feet apart. And it, initially I wasn't sure whether the letter J was the lot designation letter of the lot or whether it stood for the last name of the owner of the lot. Well, in all of my letters up to the distribution of the e-packet, I was still assuming 
that both of those granite monuments marked with the letter J were assigned to the Zhang Lot 76 that abuts Lot 77 to its right. It wasn't until the weekend when I was looking through the EPAC and I saw this hand-drawn uh, town document with all the 10 by 18 lots lined up in very neat rows and very neat columns with two foot walkways between the lots on the horizontal and three foot walkways between the lots on the vertical. I started looking at this and if you look at this page 11 of 69 of your e-packet, if you look at lot 83, you'll see very faintly written in the name Jang. So Jang owns lot 83. They also own lot 76. So they own two lots back to back. Well, why do we have two granite corner markers 12 feet apart if they were both assigned to lot 76, the front Jang lot, it's a 10 foot deep lot then that means if they were both apropos to lot 76, those markers should be 10 feet apart, not 12 feet apart. So all of a sudden, this final piece of the puzzle came into place, which really wiped out much of the earlier emails and writing that I've done trying to figure out what this question is all about. The answer to the question is that because those monument markers are 12 feet apart, the monument marker closest to road six looking at the plan view, is lower right corner marker of Zhang Lot 76. The marker that is 12 feet toward the top of the page and toward Lot 83 is the lower right corner marker of Lot 83. 10 foot depth to Lot 76 plus two foot walkway between Lot 76 and 83 equals 12 feet. That's why the markers are 12 feet apart. When Nathan and the surveyor, Mr. Shippen, went out over the weekend, they measured back from the second granite marker that is actually at the lower right corner of lot 83. They measured back two feet and assumed that they were measuring from the back corner of lot 76. They weren't. They were measuring back from the back edge of the two-foot walkway. Mm -hmm. Then they added two feet to that staked out our lot 84 mm -hmm. with a 10 by 18 plot after adding two feet backwards from the monument that's actually the corner of, uh, of lot 83. That's what caused this misalignment issue. So I went out this morning, I took about 20 stakes with me, I staked out the correct corners of lot 84 I did that simply by using the pins that were set in the ground by Mr. Shippen, adding two feet to the line of those pins back toward the back of lot 77, which gave me the correct corners of our lot 84 directly in line with the correct corners of lot 83. So I, 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 I pounded stakes into the correct corners of lot 84. I pounded correct uh, stakes into the corners of lot 83. I staked the two foot and the three foot walkways between all of these four lots in every possible direction. I've got about 20 or 25 stakes in the ground out there now. Everything lines up, everything is square, everything is perfect. Lot 84 using my stakes aligns with lot 83 to its left. It aligns with lot 77 with a foot walkway to the back of the um, um, proper DeSalle lot line, the DeSalle monument does impinge to that two foot walkway about a foot. And as Karen said, it just doesn't matter to us. We're gonna be dead. Anybody who wants to walk along that two foot walkway will just have to walk around the back of the monument for a distance of three or four mm -hmm. feet. It's not that big a deal. It's not worth putting the DeSalle family through the grief and the cost and the expense of relocating the monument. Uh, so that's where things currently stand. Mr. Shippen made a mistake. I'm in, I've been in general contracting for 40 years and I've laid out complex foundations with anchor bolt plans for steel columns and I know how to read a set of plans, run a tape measure, square things up. I work with architects, as you probably know, putting together budgets for buildings all over 
uh, New England for, you know, schools, courthouses, libraries, high rise, elderly living. I can, vouch, I can vouch for you, Bruce. You you know what's going on. We definitely know. Yeah, okay. All right. I've done I, a lot I, for the I, town. I'm not way through that too, more. So. so just just suffice to say that I put together the proper pieces of information and corrected the innocent error made by Mr. Shippen. Uh, I left his pins in place. I left his two back stakes on the back. Uh, the backside to the top of the page uh, 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 towards road seven. I left those in place because they're actually the backside of the two foot walkway that exists between mm -hmm. lot 84 and, and, and the road steps. seven side. Mm -hmm. uh, the two stakes that are on the front side that he put in next to his pins in the ground that are closer to lot 77, I took those out and just laid them on the ground with the tips pointing to his his pins in the ground, but his pins are still all there. I didn't do a thing with them. So anybody who can read a plan and run a tape measure can go out and double check my measurements between the stakes and see that everything aligns perfectly square, walkways, lot lines, everything is done right. And that's the end of my story. That's that's my rant. Uh, I, I'd like to think that getting it right is more important than trying to bludgeon us with a letter and. You know, I don't want, you know, say Bruce is just all fake news or something. No, that, that's not the case. <laughs> I screw up. I raise my hand and say, I'm sorry. I made an error. Let's make it right. And that's all we're trying to do here as a team. That's it. Well, and I, I guess I want to ask a question. I guess because reading all your letters and what you guys are just talking about now, you even just as of this morning just figured out what the mistake was. Am I correct? No, Can you just say no. that? No, as soon as we got the measurement from Bill Shippen. So this but you had to go out and figure out where that measurement difference was, correct? After it got staked out, and then you could see how far back we were from that whole back row. Yeah, yeah. we were we were once once when you go out and look at where his four stakes were, mm -hmm. the four stakes on where Mr. Shippen placed it in relation to the back of lot 77, it was three and a half or four feet from the back of the uh, the Sal Monument. And yet the Sal Monument is a foot back toward our lot 84 from being in line with the Zhang Monuments on 77. So the DeSalle Monument is obviously set back a foot further than the Zhang Monuments. Mm -hmm. And yet he had our corner placed another three and a half feet back behind the DeSalle lot. Which means we were four feet, roughly, back behind the Zhang not the Jane, behind, the behind lot 76 Jang. So there was a four foot walkway created behind Jang by the incorrect placements of our lot 84. So, Teresa, in a way you're, you're right in that we just discovered these errors because Bill just surveyed on the 28th and today right, is October right. 5th. So all, and the all meeting of, is now. All of my letters mm -hmm. up to the point of the E packet were based on my trying to figure out why are these monuments 12 feet apart if they both relate to lot 76 on Jang? It wasn't until over the weekend after the E packet had been prepared with a lot of my earlier thoughts that I finally figured out that Jang also owns lot 83 and that those monuments uh, with the letter J that are 12 feet apart each mark the front lower right corner of, of those their, two lots, lots yeah. and then all the pieces yeah. it's you know like yeah. a so if you like a puzzle that everything fell into place well this is why they're 12 feet apart uh on on page 13 of 69 which is the plot plan drawn by the surveyor he shows the monument as being the upper right corner of lot 76 yeah. it actually should be the lower right corner of 83 so the correct placement on his plot plan of that granite marker that he notes should be two feet closer to the third side of the uh, rebar set. So what are you looking, I guess, to get done with this? Bring, bring, uh, Remeasure so that we're in alignment with the rest of the grades. Truly, if, if you take a look at this map from page, what do we say, 11 of 69, yep. and if you're all the way to the right-hand side of that page, you were looking down that row. In reality, you actually see the DeSalle monument out of sync with every other monument down that row. It is set back. 
it's but so our, yeah. because this had never been measured for us personally so we would know the exact corners we were concerned that the DeSalle monument was actually on our lot that's how far back it set it's within a foot of our lot line but at this junction, you know, our if our lot is set correctly and aligned correctly, measured correctly, it will be in alignment with all the other grave lots on uh, that last row, which includes 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, and then us at 84. Look, and any, we will have walkways to our, because we're going to, you know, plan on having our feet towards the church and then our heads towards the back, you know, the top of road seven there. So the next people there won't be right, their grave won't be right on top of ours. Right. You see, that setting it back now, that's going to just absolutely destroy the whole next, I mean, we'll have space, I suppose, you know, we, <laughs> unless you, because you won't, it won't be usable, I guess, for a, a grave any, lot. Any, any one of you take this page 11 of 69 of your e-packet, and go out and take a look at the stakes that I put in, mm -hmm. take a look at the location of the four pins in the ground Mr. Shipman placed, and it is clear as day, mm -hmm. even to somebody who isn't a construction professional, that Mr. Shipman has the pins two feet farther back toward road seven than they're supposed to be. Yeah. All the stakes yeah. that we're in are square with, yeah. with, with the entire row yeah. of, of rows and columns and all the walkways mm -hmm. are square and in place right where they need to be. Mr. Shippen simply, he just made an error. So, so let me understand this. You say your, your lot is sticking out. So to make that right. come back, yeah. they're gonna have to cut some of the lot off of no, your corner there. No, you slide the whole thing back. You don't cut it, you slide it. So we, we, we have, have a 10, 10 foot, we have a 10 foot height, you keep it 10, 10 foot, foot slide deep. it back towards the south. Because what he's done, he's measured it. Four but you're saying you're gonna be awful close to the south then. We have no choice no. because the DeSalle... We're not yes. going to, we're gonna be two feet away from the south's back lot line. His monument is over the back of their lot line yes. by a foot. By a foot, it's in the walkway. It's in the two foot so, walkway. Right, so we're not any really closer to their lot, we're just closer to their headstone because the headstone's been right. misplaced. Our, when, when, when those pins are moved two feet closer to the back of lot 77, our lot 84 will be directly in line yes, with Jay. lot 83 and all, all the, the lots to down. the left. All it the will be down. directly in line. Yep. And we, you won't be losing the space behind us up towards road seven right. for a future <laughs> grave for someone else. Any future grave that was placed toward road, 80, toward toward road, road seven. seven on the backside of lot 84, if you insist on keeping the corner markers where they are now, either of the lot developed on our backside toward road seven would not have a two fuck way with mm -hmm. us and their lot line and our lot line would coincide with side. each other. They would be the same line. Yeah. Or if you want to insist on a two foot walkway between lot 84 and the other lot to road seven, then that back. lot will be out of line with every lot to its left. That's right. Can I ask a question to Sue? So is every lot the same size? I don't think they are. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking to Sue, look, I'm sorry. That's what, yeah, she's up there, sorry. So, um, no, they are not. They are, but we've also got this hand drawn. Okay. But, um, the other piece I want to say is that there will be no plot sold directly behind 84. That's a road. And we purposefully did move the plot out the two feet. Mm -hmm. They give plenty of room for the mowers between, and we made the mm -hmm. walkway a little bit larger, and mm -hmm. we will do that all the way across. Wait, 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 sorry. So you're saying, Sue, so 83 and 84, that row there is going to be the last row. Yeah, that's the last okay. row of that, of that row. Right. And then there's the row, and then there's another set of two uh, double rows of graves. And then another road. If, and so if I may if we, point something hold on, out Bruce, here, hold on, Bruce, Bruce. Yeah. hold on. All right, Sue. Um, so, so if we move Sanford's lot up, that means it's going to close it in, and it's not going to be consistent all the way across for mowers and everything else. If we leave That's it correct. the way it is, it's going to be spreading out a little bit. That's right. That is correct. 
And but let me let me point one other thing out now. You show Road Seven on this plan, okay? On the ground out at the cemetery, there is no Road Seven. You have about a fifty foot wide island that will accommodate four or five rows of graves, one right after the other, before the next road that's actually on the ground. If you're going to put Road Seven in you're gonna cut that road right through the middle of the grass island, the entire length of the island left to right on the plan view. That road's not there right now, it's grass. It is grass, but it is a road. It will okay, be, yeah. So, yeah. All right, all right. My assumption when I saw that out there was that you weren't going to put in the road, you would just decided to have four or five rows of graves in that big wide island and call it good. No, that it was intended to be a road and there were a number of reasons why the crew didn't put it in right now. It is marked on the next section of map that shows all of the subsequent roads that that well, in a way a that, grassy road. In a way that exacerbates the issue. If you leave that lot stake as it currently is, the other lots that abut a road seem to have roughly about two feet of foam, if that, between the edge of their lot and the edge of the gravel road. If you push our lot 84 back two feet, it may even be in the road, or it will certainly, our back lot line where our monuments are, are gonna be right next to the gravel. Hey, can I ask another question? Two foot walkway between uh, the back of our lot and the edge of the road. I, I would go like ahead, to clear ahead, one thing up before you ask a question, if I yeah, could, Madam Blackman. Um, the way the, Ra the Raymond Hill Cemetery is set up, is your headstones will not be on the end you're talking about. Your feet will not be pointing toward the church. Your feet will be pointing toward the woods and your headstones will be facing road seven. So can I ask this yeah. question then? Mm -hmm. So why? Okay, okay. Uh, okay, to make it conform, I to do the two that, feet. Because there is no road seven now. Feet yeah. walkway. And then to make it in, we would make it that lot actually smaller than to make it conform. Is what I'm no. thinking. No. Wait, 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 wait. I'm asking Sue. Sorry. So I'm trying to figure out. So to make that lot smaller, is that still can somebody be buried in it? It doesn't need to be made smaller. Okay. It's fine the size it is. I wouldn't accept it anyway because I paid for a 10 by 18. Well, I know that. I'm just trying to ask questions is what I'm trying to do here about it. Um, well, the whole solution is just to slide the pins two feet toward the sow and then they will be in line with all the other lots left to right because right. They, they were set too far back by two feet because the surveyor misconstrued that second uh, granite monument with the letter J on it. He thought- You're making, you're making an assumption on what the surveyor used for his base, but- Well, it makes sense. The numbers make sense. The plot, that, the plot that we have from the surveyor gives you a 10 by 18 plot. Correct, uh, correct. And that's what you purchased, correct? That is correct. But okay. where it's now being said to be placed, let's say down here at the, we've got 79, we've got Morse, I can read that one. I think that there's Miller. Let, let's, let's cut this back to simple. You bought Again, a, you bought, you bought a 10, a you bought a 10 by 18 lot. Right. That's what's marked out there. You're right. Just, you just, you know, uh, so, I mean, you, you've got, if you use what the surveyor has got there, you have yeah. what you bought. Correct? Yep. But okay. in, in the wrong placement. And when you guys see it out on the ground, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a, a statement now, and I'm really very serious about this, okay? So if the town of Raymond makes the decision now to change the Sanford Lot 84 placement so that it is no longer in alignment with the other grave sites, and if the town of Raymond care at this time whether or not the new Lot 84 placement negatively impacts any future grave sites or road behind the sand for lot 84, I will require a signed and notarized document that the town of Raymond will not assign or assess any fees or costs of monument, headstone, and or body replacement. To me, my estate, or my heirs, should future town council persons realize and want to later change things back to the original plan. So take this picture, if you will, you've got the map. Take it and slide the whole thing, 10 foot upwards towards road seven by two feet. Tell me if that looks like it's in 
the right alignment with the rest of the lots on the top edge yeah. of that map. Why would you want to do that? Well, Please. it's like, well, it doesn't make sense, and you're losing that space. So let, me, let, me, let me make a quick analogy for you, okay? When Jordan Small School was built, you had a general contractor who took a set of, of architects and engineer plans, and he contracted to build a school, which had a foundation of certain dimensions with certain angles in it, with anchor bolts in it that were just so. So when the steel came down from the factory, the steel was erect, the building went up nice and square, and Raymond got the building that they, that they contracted for. Would the town have accepted the contractor coming to the town once the foundation was in and saying, you know what? We didn't pour that foundation quite square. It's about three and a half feet out of square because instead of 90 degree angles, we've got 88 and 92 degree angles. And if you extrapolate that over 140 feet, the foundation is three and a half feet out of square, which means when the steel comes down, it's not going to fit on the anchor bolt, but don't worry about it. We'll just, we'll just splice new base plates to the columns. We'll cut the beams. We'll scab steel onto the beams, and we'll just make it right. We hope it won't fall down, but it'll all be enclosed by finished walls when we're done, so you won't even see it. So don't worry about it. I don't think that's a good comparison, to be honest. Well, it, I really it, don't. It's not really Teresa, good. Teresa, it, it, it's an analogy I'm trying to make. I know, it. but you're we, using, we you're using the building. A, we purchased, we purchased with a 10 height. by 18 foot lot. But this is the town plan. We didn't draw this plan. The town drew this plan. It shows all of these 10 by 18s in line with each other with two foot walkways and three foot walkways. That's what we bought. It's very easy to construct it this way. All you have to do is have the surveyor, he can meet with me and Nathan or go out with Nathan uh, and just look at the stakes that are out there and he'll see that my stakes are 100% correct. When you move it back, it Even takes away that two feet in up. between. Am I correct? Pardon? When you move it back, it takes away that two feet. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It's correct? the two feet. It it's creates the two, two feet. It's, it's the now two four. feet that's supposed to be there. Right. Right now, it's four feet. Not right now, it's four feet right. between the back of 77 and ours. Yes. Because that's... he measured back two feet from the granite monument that he thought was the back corner of lot 70. You're assuming that that's what it's he It's not, it's the face. front corner yeah. of lot 83. The numbers match, it, it's reasonable and don't. You're, assume, you're making an assumption that's we, not based in fact. The reality was. You don't know what his baseline was. Well, okay, it was, well, it was, it was, it was take that as it may, okay? Like that, so. the, I'm yeah. gonna take it with so, a grain of salt. I'm listening, Rolf, that what you're going to say. Okay. I think we, 76 I think and 83, I think a two-foot as as two foot walkway in between 77 are, so. and 84, uh, there's a four-foot walkway. Marshall, any questions? We have a four-foot walkway between us and the DeSalles right now. Two foot everywhere else down the road. Whether he made that assumption, however he made it, it's now four feet between us and DeSalles, two feet. It should be two feet. Yeah. It's four feet now. It's four feet. But for, what I'm hearing is you're never going to be satisfied with the survey work, so, you know. No, that's not true. That, it is that's, exactly true. That's, that's making that's, a that's sense. What I'm hearing is that you will never no. be satisfied unless it is exactly what you laid out. It's no, you, This is what the map was laid out. professional surveyor's plot that he did. Well, with any dis I, I mean no disrespect. Had you listened to anything that I've said about what the mistake is, the surveyor made a mistake. He measured back two feet from the granite marker that he thought was the back corner of lot 76. It's not. It's the front corner of lot 83. That's why those monuments are 12 feet apart. If they were 10 feet apart, they would both be the monuments of lot 76. They're not. They're 12 feet apart. They're each the front corner of lot 76 and 83. The surveyor screwed up. He made a mistake. That's the fact. Marshall? You're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. If you go out and look at the stakes, you'll see that what I put out there this morning is 100% correct. It's very easy to correct. Okay. Marshall? <sighs> okay, it's my turn. Bruce, what, what marker did you use to set your pins? I used the Dijang marker that is the front corner of 76. Okay. It's 12 feet from that point to the other J marker, which is the front corner of 83. Sue, okay. look, so look, has this 
the entire back lot been surveyed? Yes. Okay. So which, 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 which back lot do you mean? I'm talking about the, the addition behind the church. The, the new section has been. Yeah. Right, new section. Okay, because that's where we are, right, Bruce? Yeah. No, this is still part of the old section. No, it isn't. But it's fine. This was, yeah, this was on the map, and these portions, there, there are graves in there now, and I bought this in 2012. So yeah. that, that's, we were the last one on the far right-hand side on the back, on the last Before one they well. cleared the trees. Before, yeah. they, cleared Before the trees. they cleared the trees. Okay, all right, I understand. Okay, and my last question is, would it be worth a phone call to Mr. Shipman to find out exactly where his starting <laughs> because it should have been the paved road. Well, I, I, yeah. no paved road. I, I have actually emailed Mr. Shippen just to inform him of what my conclusions are about what was down out there and what the correct situation should be. He was informed by the town not to talk to me because he, you are his client. And so I, I understand that. And I said, fine. Uh, I'm willing to meet with Mr. Shipman and Nathan White and walk through my stakes and my logic behind all this. I honestly believe now that Mr. Shipman has my emails, if he goes back out and he'll come to the realization that those granite markers are the front corners of 83 and 76 mm -hmm. and that he measured back from, from the back one and added two feet that he shouldn't have added. Mm -hmm. And he pushed well, well, back well, two well, feet where he shouldn't have been pushed back. All right, I have one final comment, and that is yeah. I do not believe that a licensed surveyor would use a granite marker in the ground. He had to have a starting point somewhere else. It's worth a phone call to him to see mm -hmm. where that starting point was. That's, I agree. Well, I don't know. All I can tell you is the granite markers are 12 feet apart, so they cannot both possibly relate to the same lot, mm -hmm. and they don't. So if you look at it on the ground, our, our lot is two feet back behind Jang now. And that is the, and, and it puts the walkway between Sanford and the Sal at four feet. Um, Instead of two feet. Yeah, to the left of us, as far as Jang goes, those, uh, the uh, placement of the walkways, everything there is just fine. But now our backside again, three, our four feet back behind, or four feet, walkway between the cell and Sanford versus a two, and now we're an additional two feet back behind Jang. It, it, and Rolf, you're right, it's the size we purchased. It's not the right placement, but if that's where you're gonna go with it, I really need to have a signed notarized legal document stating that you will not charge me for having but like, quote unquote misplacement of any bodies or any markers when you discover that, oh my God, they're two feet into the roadway or however <laughs> the road's gonna be. Let me ask you this. this you're saying the Sal Monument is placed yeah. wrong, correct? Correct. correct. Right. So who's to say Jang is not incorrectly placed? Because Jang is- They're placed. all in line. They're all in line. All, all the way down. All the way down the, the line. Every, everybody's in line yeah. along the road. Yeah. Okay. Except they're the all Sal. square along the road. Yeah. Everybody that is already installed our line, there aren't that many in our line, but those that are, are, are in line properly too. placed mm -hmm. behind all of the graves that are along road five. Yeah. Is that, uh, I'm sorry, along road six. Yeah. All the ones along road six are on a straight line. The yeah. few graves that are installed behind them are in line with the two foot walkway behind them. Yeah. Lot 84 will be correctly in line with everything if everything is just moved two feet back, yeah. back toward uh, lot 77. Right now it's four feet. That's it right. should be two feet. So essentially, if it stays the way it is, it's three foot between us and the DeSalle monument, even though the monument is one foot into the walkway, but from the backside of their lot line, it's four feet. And it's totally, it's just, we're going to stick out like a sore thumb and someone down the road is going to notice it and they're going to say, Sanfords have to pay to have that fixed. And I'm just going to say, no, we're not, because we're telling you now, all it needs to be is just remeasured back two feet from the back of the DeSalle lot line. Yeah. It's, it seems simple to me, but we've been out there, we've looked at it over and over again, and anybody can see that DeSalle is out of line with everybody else in that front row along road six. Wouldn't you measure from that point? No, you measure from the line, not where the monument is. I think at some points, some people, they just didn't know where to put the monument. And so they just set it where they thought it should well, go. No, look, I, this, this, this is, again, 
once you realize that Zhang owns both those lots, 76 and 83, it's clear to me that the Zhang family set those granite monument quarters with the letter J on it for Zhang. They set it so each monument corner would be at the right corner of those two lots. That's well, what I'm not going to resume what they did, but them buying those two lots, that's theirs. I'm looking at, oh, yeah, at they're fine. The we they're don't fine. know what they presumably did. And, and the displays really are fine too. They really are. I mean, I don't care if their monument stands in the walkway. I really don't. That's between Raymond and the DeSalles. They just want lot 84 in line with everything. With everything else, left. that's all. You know, we're sticking we want to be out of square with everything to its left, which is exactly what's going to happen the way mm -hmm. it's currently staked. That's right. Exactly. So I have, I guess I have to kind of agree with Marshall as far as we've got a company that, mm -hmm. um, that is known for what they do and maybe just that phone call to say, okay, what did you do? Just mm -hmm. to ask how he came up with it. Is there any report with this, Sue? There isn't. What Bill did was he used GPS coordinates based on the uh, survey that he did in the uh, rear, on the rear rows there behind this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he did, sometimes. Not, he did not use the granite marker as a starting point. We he didn't take have. that into account, and we gave. Well, I think he did. Wait, Bruce. Bruce wait, please. Okay, please, Bruce, you. you're not answering the questions for Sue. Sue's not answering questions for you. So, just give her a chance. We so did we take that those granite markers into account, and gave the Sanfords more space, and it may be up to two feet, to have to make sure that they had enough space there, knowing that we had some wiggle room with the road and the rest of the rows, uh, lots can easily line up with that. So we did take all of that into account. And one piece, one piece that I do want to mention too, is that when the town um, adopted the cemetery ordinance, one of the positions that was created was cemetery sem uh, supervisor. That's mm -hmm. me, it isn't me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did some maintenance on the on the uh, lots mm -hmm. and on, as far as mulching okay. and things of that nature. Okay. Maintenance isn't the one that is in charge of going out and making sure that the lots are right or um, surveyed. That's good to know. Thank you, Sue. When was that created? Hey, can I make a supposition? Maybe three. <laughs> maybe three. Maybe maybe three years. I'd have to look at the town oh, meeting. Years ago. Okay. Yeah. If, if I could make a supposition, I'm going to use construction logic here on how this error by the surveyor occurred. I don't think he realized that lot 83 is owned by Zhang. I think they went out there and they saw the two granite corner markers yeah. and they just assumed that the granite corner marker on the back side was part of lot 76 and they said, Supposed to make you, you've made Bruce, you've, you've, you've made that statement seventy-six four or five times. Two two feet, feet, on record that's what he used that. to set the pins by. That's okay. construction logic. I think that's what happened. The fact is, you you're, you're making a supposition on his work. So, you know, right. you know, and, and that's, I, that's I, appreciate, I appreciate your logic, <laughs> and I appreciate what you're saying. But the fact is, you know, the only one that can say what he use for his base is the surveyor. Right. That's right. And, yeah. and, and Sue that was there. So, you know. My stakes are in place if, and you know, if the surveyor goes out there, you'll see everything, out, see everything lined up. His reliance see. was not on the monument. If his reliance was on GPS placement and other surveying facts, then, you know, I have to put a higher level of, of reliance on that. Because that is his, you know, that is his, his profession at that point. You know, I would, I would agree that we could, we could make sure that he did not have reliance on those cement monuments or those monuments in order to make his plot. And based on that, I would have to go with what his, what his plot layout is. Because that he's got that for the entire for the entire cemetery. So uh, we're at the point there where it says if you you know you we can't come to a meeting of the minds that his you know that that using 
his professional placements and whatnot, that you're not in agreement with that, then we're not going to have a meeting of the minds. Um, Ralph, as Sue Look had noted, he did use the Jang corner markers as part of his measurements. He did he use that in conjunction I'm with, that with what Marshall had said. Dates. I think we need to get um, Bill Shippen back and just reevaluate what he no, did. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we need to call Bill Shippen <laughs> and ask him what his starting point was. Mm -hmm. that survey. If it, if it, is and his survey is accurate based on that and he can document that then it is what it is and i'm sorry okay and, and then i do at that <laughs> junction then um we yeah. have the size of the lot that we bought i will want to have this notarized and signed um, so that my future heirs and my estate will not be assessed any fees to move any headstones or, or bodies um, i frankly don't see that happening because as sue look said we have wiggle room on the road you know, because um, people change, um, and, uh, governments change, uh, people within the government change, and I will need that in writing, signed in, in, in writing, documented, notarized. I, I, I would ask that you ask Mr. Ship one mm -hmm. other question, and this will go back to my comment earlier about page 13 of 69 of the packet. If you look at that, he puts the monument with the J at the upper right corner of lot 76. That's where he has that shown on page 13 of his partial plot plan that's shown with the actual survey results. So we know that's what he's using. Wait a minute. Why didn't you just well, say that monument is correctly drawn as being the upper right corner of lot 76, then the distance between the two corner markers would be 10 feet because the lot is 10 feet. That corner marker should be drawn two feet more beyond the lot line of 76. That is where its correct placement is on the ground because it's 12 feet apart, not 10 feet apart. Wait a second. So you're saying J Monument is up in the corner on his to, paper. Go, to yeah, me, that's go, just go, saying go that page, it's there. Yeah, it's go, not saying what the measurements are. Yeah, go to page 13. Go to page 13. I am. I'm on it right now. And, you'll, okay. and, and looking at page 13, he shows granite marker granite monument marker j as the upper right corner of the jang plot 76. if that is the correct location jang plot is 10 feet deep so the distance between those two markers on the ground would be 10 feet the distance between the markers on the ground is 12 feet so but looking at this i'm not seeing any markers at all any markers? I'm just seeing your your lot with the 18 feet, the 10 foot. I see the J monument. Do you see the rate the rebar set? Yes. On the left hand side, that's the lower Jang um, plot or lot, if you will. Right, and, but yeah. it doesn't have any measurements on it to show. But he's using that. He's using. The he's J got the monument incorrectly placed again, Teresa. He shows the J monument as the upper right corner of the forward Jang plot. Yes. Yep. The plot is only 10 feet deep. So right. that is the correct location of that monument. The monuments on the ground would be 10 feet apart. They're not, right. they're 12 feet apart. So this monument that he has drawn is not correctly placed. Correct. It should be two feet. It's, excuse my ignorance, absolutely. On the plan. I'm not seeing any measurements. I, I just see it saying that it's up in that right-hand corner. That's all. Well, it's not saying right. how many feet it was measure, or anything like that. Teresa, what you are seeing is that corner with the little square, and that yeah. indicates the J corner marker, if you will. Yeah. What Bill has done, he's using that marker on the ground as the backside of the uh, forward J plot next to road six. That little square around there is not the backside of that front plot. It's the front side of the, of the back, back lot. Plot. That's why there's 12 feet between them because right. it's a 10 foot deep lot for the front Jang plot plus a two foot walkway is 12 feet. That's plus why the cemetery with a flat is 12 feet apart on the ground. Right. So when you're out there on the ground, you can actually see it. I think it. we've talked this thing to death. So, well, what? I don't want to make any assumptions on what he did or what he didn't do and the ifs. Well, you so. need to call him and ask him what he did. Right. I so agree, Marshall. What what the, That's is, right, Marshall. What is the pleasure of the select board on this? 
Well, I, I feel that we definitely need to call the gentleman and have him come back because I think that what, um, what the Sanfords are saying seems to be correct. And at the end of the day, we could go with the GPS settings. We could go with this. We could go with that. But sometimes you have to go with the eye. And if we have something sticking out two feet, four feet, and it isn't in a row as everything else, we want everything to be in a good, clean row. We want the, the cemeteries to flow. You yes. know, and, and in order to have that, we can't have it lodged two things out. I mean, yeah, here, Geisley or whatnot um, has their monument has moved or was placed wrong or something to that effect. Well, that was wrong then. We shouldn't continue to keep it wrong and have the Sanfords be two feet out. It should be flowing all the time. So I would like to see the gentleman come back and us pepper him with, or not us, I guess, but someone pepper him with these questions before I feel good about leaving it. And I don't blame Mrs. Sanford for wanting um, documentation. I don't, I don't, I mean, it sucks to have to say that, but I don't blame her because 10, 20 years from now, right. our sons and daughters are going to be doing this and they may look at it different. So I don't blame mm -hmm. them. That's so the way I think it. it's, Mr. Sanford, though, I don't think it's okay that you're taking the markers out. I don't think that's okay at all. So I need so you to leave those markers. No, no, we don't thing. want to, we don't want the DeSalle marker to be moved. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the survey markers. You removed them. Whether you laid no, them on the ground no. or not. Yes, you no, did. No, no, no. Teresa, yes. there are four corner pins with pink tape on them that he set in the ground. They're there. Right. They're there. They're right. there. I did not, did not do a thing with those. You did. I you did took them out and laid them those. down. Just please leave those alone, okay? Leave his markers in. So I did not do anything to the four pins in the ground. I did not touch them. I did not touch them. I can't read right. right. the two front stakes just right. when somebody goes out there and looks at all my stakes and the big picture of what I've done out there, those two front stakes won't be sticking out. I can go back and put them back in where they were. That's not a big deal. I didn't touch anything to his actual survey. Didn't touch it. The Sue, survey pins are in the ground right, right where he put them. Sue, would you okay. be the okay. person okay. that would go wow. out with Bill during the uh, follow-up measurements? Yes, I went out with the person. on what he's saying. Yeah. What's that? I went out yeah, with the person. Had... Yes. I totally agree with Lawrence Taylor and every word he said. Uh, yeah. I think it's exactly the thing that has to be done. We're mm -hmm. not going to answer these questions tonight. It just can't be done. All we can do is propose. The, survey, the surveyor okay. has, to, mm -hmm. has to come in and. Mm -hmm. And looking at what we have for pictures, they are all in a line. Yes, you know, exactly. All the and sketches and all that are in a line. So exactly, exactly. So you know, I, I mean, I could be Karen. Karen, take, I could be selfish and take it as it is. However, for the future people who will be in the cemetery, that just impinged on that next on the next people who were back behind us. I don't That's want to be, be that kind of anyway. person, and I, I just don't want to be that way. I it's, I'd rather have it right, do it right the first time, and then you don't have to worry about it ever again. I think enough has been said. Yes, it you know, do you make the mistake right or do you try to sweep it under the rug? I would prefer as a team to make it right. Mm -hmm. We want it to be right yeah. as much as we can. Yes, yes exactly. Exactly. Thank let's let's move to do that. Thank you, um, Mr. Gifford. Thank you. I guess I guess the big question would be if we have shipment come out there and resurvey, is everybody going to be happy with the results? Well, yeah. Uh, Goes out there and <laughs> mistakes, he's going to understand what what's, what happened. Yeah, once he sees it, he'll understand. Yeah. Let's get him oh, out there and not one of the other he'll, he'll realize he's he's what's going on. Takes information and and verifies the plot from the GPS right. and from whatever he used. For, you know, what's he use, using for his base? That's what it. You know, that's if if he does that and it matches or and if it doesn't then it's adjusted to that but if what he does and that matches what he's got there are you then going to be satisfied and we if you can we put that on pause and give you the answer once we get the results no <laughs> i think it's perfectly reasonable to <laughs> never agree on something you don't know what's happening. Yeah, we don't know what he's going to we come back know. and say. I'm right. confident he's going to recognize it. Hey, there. Yeah, yeah. Everything on positive well, there. So, so what I'm hearing it's is... It's very possible let me, let me that just, everybody just, will not agree with this. Well, it's possible yeah. indeed. And, what, if, what, and if, what, it is, if it is if it is set back, if that's the ultimate, we will accept it with 
a letter uh, with notarized and legal documentation releasing that is our errors. releasing that is not our error and no one in our future will be um, assigned or assessed fees to move it. Right. I, 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 it's the right, you know, so that's where we are. You make at. a mistake, you own it. You we own don't it. own it. That's you right. own it. That's right. And that's where we're going to. What, what I'm hearing is you, you, you'll, you'll look at it, but you won't really accept it. You'll want something more from us. And so I'm really, yeah. Hearing that yeah. no matter what happens, we're never going to have a meeting of the minds. That's yes, what I'm hearing. Yes, we'll accept I it. I honestly think when the surveyor goes out there, yeah. there, we will. We'll all just the kid up going to nod our heads right. and say, yeah, now it's right. That's right. what I honestly believe. That's right. Just looking at it on the road. We're looking at it out yeah. there. We've had people come and look at it. Too. It's all on the ground. You it's all on it. the ground. You can see it. It's right there. Um, there's, and it, I don't know. I don't know how else to explain oh, it to don't, you. Don't um, need to. This is the future of the Raymond Hill Cemetery that we're talking about because of one error made on the 28th of September by one man. Um, well, you're going to have to move road seven down to no, the right now <laughs> when it's developed. Building, you know, I don't know. Like helicopter propellers. I'll just Circles. buy a bigger lot. I honestly think it's it, I, I think it's all going to fall into place I once he too. goes back out there. I do too. Well, what I'm hearing is understand, understand what he did and, and, and it'll, it'll all work out. Wanted to, you're not going to be happy. That's what I'm hearing. Well, Ralph, that's that's really that's uh, it's kind of condescending and it's really not appropriate at this point. I think what we need not to condescending because out there and um, and so we 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 it, it will brought be, it out. It will be that, but you're not you're not willing to take the you're not willing to say that you will accept the professional survey if he goes back and relooks at it, that you will be willing to accept that. That's what you are. That's, that's not what we said. said. We said we would accept it with a letter written by you're, so you're putting Town of Raymond on that it. this so is this is the result of this meeting. That's beyond what we would do with any plot that we sell. What I bought is on the map, straight in the line, in alignment. What you're what you're trying to make it's the hand-drawn map though. Have it out, but it's the still everything on the ground is in alignment as well, Teresa. So right. what you're asking us to do is make a commitment to move the lot back two feet. Hey, you know, we, we're amenable, but because it's now going to be out of line, I don't want to be responsible for the movement. Now DeSalle may ultimately be responsible for the movement of their monument back into their lot. That's not my decision to make. That's between you and the town. That's right. I'm not moving. Uh, no. This is between us and the town of Raymond, and we don't want to be saying having someone coming down the road and say, you know, they bought this, but boy, are they out of alignment? They need to move everything back and pay for it. So, I mean, you do you want it to look like that, like a slower thumb sticking out? I don't think you do. I think you want it in uh, longitudinal and latitudinal uh, alignment. The heads, our headstones will be two feet out of a line with all the other headstones going yep. down that row if you insist on this. Yep. If you want our headstones to line up with everybody else, the lot's got to come two feet or back the way yeah. I've got it staked and shown. It's it's all on the ground. Just have them go out and look at it. It's all there. Yep. Okay. So we've heard we've heard from people what is what is the action that wants to be taken. I would like to see the gentleman come back out, but I'd also, or have a conversation with Nate or something to that effect, but to make sure that he hears, not from Bruce, but from Nate or one of us, what Bruce is complaining about. So to make sure that he can envision what's going on and then make his mm -hmm. professional call. And at that point, Bruce and Karen will have no choice but to be satisfied with it. You know, and, and, and so will we because he mm -hmm. under he sees what we're seeing because what I see, they're right. But there's other people in this conversation that doesn't seem like what they're saying is right. So leave it to the pros. Go for it. I agree. What do you do? I agree. Okay. I don't think we're I don't think we're saying he's wrong. I I'm saying we don't know enough. Mm -hmm. right. I, I want to say something right. here though. A, I agree with that too. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. say something. I would like Dawn to get back to the Sanfords because I think some of these letters have been pretty mean. Some of the comments in them. I understand your frustrations, but some of the comments 
Bruce. I don't think we're appropriate. So I think Don needs to, you need to deal straight through Don on this, please. And we'll give you, we'll get the answer. Or should we be I... dealing with Sue since she's the supervisor of the cemetery? If, if that's what Sue wants to do. But again, I, I'd like to keep this, this respectful and civil, please. I don't but... disagree with that. I, I think that after eight years, we're entitled to a little bit of discomfort with um, it's a little bit more than discomfort. Okay. It's a little eight bit more. Years. Right. Eight, eight years, eight years yeah. Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but it doesn't give you the right to be mean to the employees. No it really doesn't. Mean. No one was mean. It, it's stating yeah. facts is not being mean. Oh, matter. that was out of line, Karen. That really no. was. No, okay. it absolutely. Yes, it is. Can you say the facts is mean? Okay. 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 The simple fact of the matter is the lot should never have been sold before it was surveyed. It was, so now we're dealing with, we're dealing with the outgrowth of that. So the, uh, the plan of action is this. Don or Sue will recontact the surveyor to have mm -hmm. him go back, resurvey based on known spots, GPS things and, and whatnot, give a final result. That will be the defining document. If that is not acceptable at mm -hmm. that point to the Stanfords, we will refund their money. They will go, that, that sale will have been terminated and we'll all go forward. Wow, that's not what we've asked for. We want an agreement with that. What we want was the coroner's mark. And when, let's say, okay, for an example, the um, surveyor comes back, Bill comes back and it is as it is, okay? Will we have a new map drawn up that will show how these are laid out so that for the future, we can have proof that this is what you will want with the, our lot sticking out farther than everybody else. I would like to have a map. I would like to have it signed. I would like to have it notarized that this is what the decision has been and not going by the map that shows everything in alignment. That's what we have right now, and that's also what Bill put together on that page 13. Looks like everything's in alignment, but it really isn't. Well, let's, uh, let's just see what Mr. Shipman has to say about it. Okay, yeah. sure. The key to the whole thing is the granite markers being 12 feet apart, not 10 feet apart. No, I disagree. Look, the key let's, is the whole thing let's, let's, that is let's the those questions be answered by Mr. Yeah. Shipman. Yeah, okay, that's reasonable. Moving right along. Is okay. everyone in agreement with that? We'll move right along to. Yeah. Okay. You're Thank you, gentlemen. We're all ladies. done. We're all done. Thank you for your time. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank Hearing you. us out. Okay. I don't know how I leave the meeting. Leave. There we go. Bye bye now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Be safe. Next item is. Bonnie, you just got okay. So these these next items, as people will recall, we had uh, you know one of the one of the town meeting articles says that the board shall accept or reject all grants uh, we've had a number of grants that have come in uh, through the COVID things like that and and it's really just a situation of approving those approving or you know, accepting those grants so that we can close that loop we we've received the grants we've done work on that but we never because of COVID in the meetings and things like that, we have never been in a position, you know, put those on the thing just to formally accept. So uh, first one is consideration acceptance of a $5,000 grant from the Center for Tech and C uh, Civic Life for election expense. Sue, you want to fill us in on that? Um, that is one that I found out fairly late in the game, but I found out about um, when I went back and looked from a vendor that I had asked to remind me of any sales that they had coming up with voting booths. And it's uh, one that can be used for election equipment, for extra expenses because of the size of the election and or because of COVID. So it wasn't strictly tied to COVID. Um, and what I've already done is ordered nine single booths um, that can be used and that will help us to uh, have more spots with our current quad booths, I can only use two sides of them for the election to still have social distancing. And the single booths will allow, will be much easier to social distance. Um, those are already on order. Um, 
the ballot drop box. I don't know if any of you have seen it that's already installed in front of the town office. Um, that is going to be partially pay or mostly paid through a, a um, reimbursement from the Secretary of State's office and through a federal grant that they receive, but the remainder will be part of this grant. And um, we'll be having some election workers come and work extra hours to help us process absentees before the election. And that will go to the rest of the money will go to offset their expenses. Okay, is there a motion to accept the grant? So moved. Seconded. Second. Second. Discussion. All those. Really concern on these grants, and this this is a, a blanket concern, is that we need to pay attention to red tape if there is any on these grants. I couldn't find any, and I did do research on the organization. It's a nonprofit. That came into being, I believe it was in 2012. Um, and from everything I could read, it seemed to be on the up and up and that there weren't strings attached to it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's moved and seconded. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Uh, let's take out of order. Let's uh, get all the grants done and then we'll go back to the GA. Yeah. So uh, consideration and acceptance of COVID-19 grants. Don? You're, you're muted, Don. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'd first like to say the grant that Sue got is something that a number of other towns have applied for and received as well. So we actually got a reminder from a couple of towns about it, but Sue had already been on it and done it. So I, well, it's a little unusual from a private foundation like that. I think it's a, you know, a good, good grant and Marshall's point is well taken, but I, I don't see any issue there. Uh, these other grants, of course, are pass-through grants, federal monies administered by the state. The first one is the Keep Me Healthy grant for $80,656. With that, we rented the so-called uh, luxury toilets. You may have seen those initially at the Veterans Park. Later, they were both at the Castletop Park. Uh, Kathy Goslin uh, had funds available to go and do educational programs to summer camps, also to go to area businesses. We provided uh, PPE to camps and to uh, businesses. Um, Castle Top staff visited all of our open space beach areas on a regular basis, daily basis, and monitored for proper um, health and safety distancing and advised people uh, when they saw something that was amiss. We uh, used the Roadrunner to communicate with this, you know, this grant. The, uh, the, I guess, uh, educational points that wanted to be made. So we've been doing that. And uh, I guess the big part of it, we ended up with a surplus because we couldn't keep the toilets as long as we wanted to keep them and, and uh, because they were rented for other functions. So we were going to build what we were calling semi-permanent uh, restrooms at the Tasseltop. Don't ask me to explain what semi-permanent means as opposed to permanent. But the uh, deal was we couldn't get the uh, permits. We couldn't get the construction materials ordered, we couldn't get the bills paid in order to do all that by the time that the grant required, which was the end of October. So actually Nathan came up with a great idea and that was why don't we see about purchasing the luxury toilets. And so we did that, we did a little negotiating. So we were able to purchase the one that's at Tasseltop now and another one that's identical. They're gonna be refurbed back to um, you know factory new specifications. And so we'll own two of those so-called luxury toilets. The benefit being that they are far superior with respect to health and sanitation. They can be moved between, you know, venues. So if we had an, an event somewhere else, you know, at the school, at another park, you know, uh, park somewhere else, we can move them around. So that's what we're going to do with the balance. The state's approved that. That's $47,000 of the $80,656. So that will fully expend that grant. Um, Kathy Goslin got a couple of uh, grants for the food pantry. One was from Cumberland County for $400. That was a pass through from us to them. The same with the uh, GP COG uh, CDBG grant. So Greater Portland Council of Governments Community Development Block Grant, $10,000 came through the town to the, uh, to the food pantry. And then the big one was a grant in, in kind, meaning we got materials from it. There were nine towns participating. It was led by Wedco and the Sebago Lake uh, Chamber of Commerce on behalf of the town of Wyndham as the applicant. It was initially 180,000 later. I think they applied for a second round and the total came up to 205, 243. 
So we've gotten a number of things from that grant. And I just put another order to Tom Bartel uh, with Kathy Goslin. So we're going to get a, a, a cash, I guess, of uh, more PPE and, and cleaning materials and whatnot. So that's a great grant. So that's, that's what we did. And so I'd like to congratulate everybody who worked on the grants. And uh, so we've been trying to do what we can to mitigate the effects of COVID-19 from a health standpoint, and also uh, importantly, the financial impact. So that's, uh, that's the round of grants that we've been able to secure so far. Can you give us a firsthand report on the luxury outhouses? I cannot. <laughs> actually, I actually, I cannot. I understand that nice. Sorry, Don. I didn't mean to pick on you there. Yeah, I bet Nate could give you a report. I think it's a valid question. It's true. Well, yeah. Check them out. <laughs> Luxury yeah. toilet? You know, the water and stuff up to it. The royal throne. <laughs> that's, that's what, I, I didn't name them. That's what they called. And so I think it's a good asset. I don't know what the useful life is, but I got to believe it's going to be at least 10 or 15 years. And so it'll be something that we can hopefully uh, look back and remember that we got through the, the pandemic safely. Do you need a motion off for all these grants? Okay. Yeah. We'll move. Second. Second. Okay. Phone's gonna die. Further discussion? All those in favor of accepting all those grants? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Uh, next would be consideration of general assistance and annual updates. Sue? And this is just that the update of the appendices. But you can't hear you, Sue. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm not muted. No. no, but you're, you must be too far back from your microphone. Oh, I probably did slide back as I was typing. I'm sorry. Um, is that better? So it's better. That's better. Um, this is the annual updates. Normally they happen earlier in the year, but like all other state agencies, things are happening a little <laughs> later in the process. Um, and it's the appendices that um, determine how much uh, aid someone can get. I think Don's more. Uh, yeah, so what, what happens is they, the Maine Municipal Association annually does a survey by county and uh, we're in the greater Portland metropolitan area for survey purposes. And so th this, uh, these amendments are an adjustment to the uh, totals that are available to qualified applicants under the ordinance, you know, by location for the basic costs of uh, uh, good services, housing, utilities, that sort of thing by, by location. So it's, a, it's something MMA does every year and then it's certified by the state of Maine. So the easy thing to do is to accept the MMA numbers rather than try to do your own survey and get it accepted. So that's what we do. Even when we weren't part of MMA, we, we adopted their model appendices, model ordinance and appendices. Any idea what the increase was? I don't, but normally it's very de minimis. Yeah. I mean, looking at find out. Out. It would be by commodity. It would be by commodity. You know, so much for each thing, but we could we could find out. I mean, looking at them, I don't see there's just any. Yeah, we could ask Jenny. Me. We could have Jenny put that in, send that out to you. Well, it can't be much more than one or two percent anyway, can it? Yeah, it's in that range. Normally. Okay, so all we need to do is move to accept the those updates. Yeah. So move. Second. Second, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Next item is, is there any public comment, Sue? There is no public. Okay. <laughs> next, next item is selectman's comment. <laughs> I got a comment. You want to have anything on Sue? Okay, seeing none, uh, town manager's report. Okay, it's gonna be a rapid fire round for dates and uh, events. So confirm dates for upcoming regular meetings, November 10th and December 8th. Reminder of upcoming holiday schedule, Monday, October 12th, Columbus Day. Reminder of upcoming election events, first week of October, absentee ballots should be available and begin to be mailed. October 19th, last day to register to vote by mail. In-person voter registration continues through election day. October 29th, last day to request an absentee ballot to be mailed. October 30th, last day to vote an absentee ballot in person at the town office. November 3rd, election day. Be sure to come out and vote. 
And next is explanation of election day procedures. So you're muted. Yes, I was texting the uh, attorney that's going to join you for executive session. Yes, and I, I probably should, maybe I should explain that a little bit too. So we're going to be joined by attorney uh, John Wall from Monaghan Leahy. I, um, so that, that's a little bit different. And uh, I had a, a request into the insurance company to use uh, an attorney from Bernstein. And so that's still under review, but this is the attorney that was assigned by uh, Argo or Trident Insurance, John Wall. And oddly enough, he didn't want to sit through the entire cemetery. Bit, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> go, go figure. I told him it would be fun. Um, How disappointing. And Alex is here too, by the way, although I guess Rolf said he didn't necessarily have to be, but he's he's, he's hung on this long, so maybe. Well, can you speak <laughs> to the toilet issue? Pardon me? Can he speak to the yeah. toilet issue? Well, let's, 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 let's finish up with item D, okay. which is pursued to explain the election day procedures. So it will be very similar to July when folks get to the school, um, the gymnasium, they'll be split into two lines and go down the hallway at six feet apart. Um, we are limited to only 50 people within the gym. That doesn't include those that are in line. So, um, but within the gym, we can have up to 50 people. It's workers and everyone. Um, once they get to the gym, we'll split those two lines into four lines. And then we, so we will have four uh, um, incoming voter lists that people will go to and it's split on uh, letters of the alphabet. Um, the people coming in are requested to please wear masks or some sort of face covering. Requested or required? Requested. The election workers will be required to wear face masks. We do have face shields too, if they want to wear those. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, gloves. There are what they call sneeze guards that are, I don't know if you saw it on the election day in July, but they are acrylic panels that everyone at the incoming list will be behind. Um, once the voter gets there and states their name and is given their ballots, then they'll go in and choose one of the booths um, and then get in a queue that again will be six, we'll have markers for uh, social distancing six feet apart. And there are uh, two ballots. One is a state that's double-sided. That'll go in the first machine and then the second machine will be set up for the town ballot, which just has the one referendum question on it. Good. And then everyone will exit the back corner like they did in July. So we won't have people crossing. You, know, you come in one side and out the other. The only exceptions to that would be folks that had um, any difficulty maneuvering um, in any way. And then we would make accommodation for that. Good. Sounds good. Okay. So Sue, we're going to go into a breakout room. Is that correct for uh, the executive session? First, we need a first. We'll need a motion to go into yes. session. So moved. Second. Oh, second? we lost Bonnie. Yeah, so we just said second. Bonnie, I think is he's quiet. I just ate my dinner. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I was so hungry. I had to eat it. So what will happen at this point is I'll put you, I'll invite you all to go to a breakout. We have to, Sue. We first have to vote to go into. Sorry, I thought you had. We have a second and we have to vote. Okay, that's, yeah, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion is carried. Now, so you can. Anyway, motion, motion to come, to out, come out of executive session. Second. Second, all those in favor? Seeing all hands raised, motion we are to adjourn. executive session. Second. Move to adjourn, all those in favor? All hands raised. Good Motion job, is carried. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.